Oh, hey, Kim. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I guess you know why I'm here. I know why you're here, yeah. I tell this to everyone. Once I open the literal door, mm -hmm. I also open the spiritual door. Whoever shows up, once I open that door, I don't control that. So it could be anyone. It can be anyone. That's I exciting. never really know yeah. until we enter the space. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. OK, so why don't we head on in? Let's head on okay. in. I'm being drawn in here. Like, this is calling me. I really just want to go and in step into this space. My psychic impression is this space was used at one time for a completely different purpose of, than storage. I see walls, uh, like like little rooms. If you could picture nine of them, mm -hmm. that's how I see it, nine. Let me just take a quick peek back here. This is the size of the rooms, big enough to put a bed and or a cot, like a, a sleeping space. Right. That's what each, each one had down the row here. Well, you know, do you want me to tell you what I was told about the place? Do you know? Yeah. In the old, like, turn of the century. Supposedly, this place was a brothel, so it makes sense that there were sections and this is where the girls' rooms would be. If these walls could talk, what went on here tells an, a, a very, very, very intriguing, almost even depressing story. Now, this is interesting. I sense a woman's presence right at the top of the steps. This lady is just like she's watching every single move I make, as if to say, where are you going and what do you want? And I just said back to her in my head, you know, this is open to the public now and I'm allowed to walk through here. And she knows that that's true, but she just feels the need to keep an eye on us. This is the hot spot. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, this, this is where I lived. I haven't been in for a while. Well, oh, well, yeah. well. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a space. Uh-huh. OK, so you were here in your college years? Mm-hmm. I want you to go back. Go back to your younger years. You opened a door to the spirit world, mm -hmm. OK? You did a seance that called the spirits to you. My sister and I used to do these fake seances where she would dress me up as a spirit and, you know, she would talk to the spirits and I would come out and be a spirit. I, I just heard Danny Boy. Danny Boy, who's that? My brother. His name is Dan. He has abilities too. Mm -hmm. Not so much your sister. You and your brother have it. Yeah, that's true. That's how I see it. You know, supposing my grandmother like the day after she died, like my brother saw her kissing me in the room and he kept like talking and talking and she turned around and it was her and then she went away. So that was always intriguing to me. So like, part of me was like, oh, I can go talk to people whenever I want. You know? And you tried to do that. When I was little, yeah. Yes, that's how I see this, exactly yeah. when you were little. That's when the portal opened up for you. That door is open now. Mm -hmm. You can't close it. So let me see what I'm picking up as I walk through this space. If I go beyond this wall here, the energy is extremely different. Uh, I hear a lot of giggling that went on back there, mm -hmm. beyond this wall, possibly when you lived here. Giggling, good times, happy times. But I have to tell you, once I come this way, I'm seeing the dark shadow lurked over your bed yeah. and kind of like, I even want to say, came into your dreams. Like a dream state, like a, like everything very violent and dark. A lot of anger. Anger, yeah, even, yeah, that makes sense. When I used to sleep in there, I'd wake up with scratches and bruises, and but I couldn't sleep. I always felt very, like, suffocate, like someone was trying to kind of kill me in there. <laughs> I wonder if that's when I saw you having all this energy, like, pinning you down. Like I said, the dark. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember just, like, waking up in fits. It's a, it's a wonder you were able to function during the day based on what went on at night. There's not quite a few people in this kitchen right now with us. There's a man who, who kind of, I think he knows you. Mm -hmm. Who's Alan? He connects to Alan. 
I have a cousin named Alan. Is his father passed? Mm-hmm. Well, that's who it is. He said, I'm Alan's dad. <laughs> that's my, well, that's my uncle, Jack. But he said something about you inherited his gift. He has a, some kind of special talent, and you have it too. Hone that, hone that. Mm -hmm. He said, you write beautifully, and you're channeling in your writing. Um, are you writing things about your ghosts? Mm -hmm. I have a, I just finished a book that's coming out, and uh, I was dealing with a lot of psychics during that time, and there was a ghost that there. I think a ghost, some guy who helped right, me, wait. like a guardian angel who helped me, All right, so that's kind of what he's saying. You channeled the ghost, so it's close enough, right? Mm hmm But he's so, like, happy to see you. Just like, <laughs> I'm really, really glad uh, your Uncle Jack is with us, especially since I didn't want to say anything back there, but somebody was stabbed back in that kitchen. Stabbed? Stabbed. I do feel that that spirit was gutted. I, I, I know. When these women, the the brothel ladies, mm -hmm. didn't give him sex, yeah. that's what he wanted. He killed them. And those scratches that you had, that you said you you were experiencing, yeah, as twisted and sick as it may seem. He probably was trying to have his way with you as a spirit. You just didn't know. You were in sleep. But, uh, yeah, the creepy. Uh, maybe a lot to digest. Yeah. Did you, like, walk around naked or, like, half-dressed? Yeah, always. That was the draw. Well, when I wrote my papers, I know. I was aware of that. Because I, I, I can't wear a lot of clothes when I'm writing. The like, ghost got aroused. Mm. Right? Because he's very earthbound. Yeah. He's very much in the mindset of being alive, having the human pleasures, not, you know, doesn't even know he's dead. Right. Okay, that's kind of how it was. Yeah. Let me, you know, I have to ask him his name. Um, Edward, Edward, Ed. That's his name. I'm just trying not to piss this man off because there's still one room we have to investigate. Just want to go in and get the full story of what kind of really went on. Okay, don't piss him off. I can't believe I used to live in this little teeny room. Wow. <sighs> I know you see a blue room. That's nothing what I just saw. How do you feel? Um, I'm not tuned in to him. I don't see the guy as the way I did, but I definitely feel like heavy in my chest. Me too. I feel like I can't, uh, like, like somebody was strangled to death in this room. This is yet another woman that was killed. This Ed guy came from behind and just, he strangled her on this bed. Just like shaking her neck and like pushing her down and <gasps> until she just has no color in her face. The woman he strangled in the bedroom was not a prostitute. It was his mother. Oh my God. I saw the uh, residual energy of what happened then, mm -hmm. but he's still in this space now. Why can't he leave? He's trapped here because he never got what he needed. He never received support by his mother or the love of his mother. Right. But most importantly, Ed is still trapped here because he's too mentally sick to deal with the magnitude of his crime. That's so sad. Yeah. That may be a lot to digest. They're both still here, in this space, in this building, in this home. I need to get out of this space. Let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I want to get out of here, too. Okay. There's just a bad vibe in this house. 